So I get asked a lot, Josh, I don't really want to stay only Baofeng. I want to go to maybe the next level of radio. And generally, not everybody has hundreds of dollars to blow on their next handheld or next radio. So the $100 mark has quite a few radios that exist, but my curiosity is how do they actually all perform when compared in an apples to apples comparison. If you've watched my videos at the park before, you know I have a disco and antenna on my roof connected to an SDR where I record signal to noise ratio data as well as audio recordings for two meter and 70 centimeters. We've been using this with a standard radio, taking one radio, connecting different antennas to it for antenna testing. But I thought, why not flip that around entirely, do the same test, make everything the same, same antenna, but use different radios and compare against their high power output settings if they're actually achieving high power output. So that's what we're out here today. We're gonna test these radios. A crowd favorite, the, the Yesu FT4X. This is about $90. You can get it at HRO, Gigaparts, you name it. The TYT, I always forget this one, TH350, I think it is. Yeah, TH350. This is a $75 radio. This is interesting though because it's a tri-bander. And the radio everybody loves, the THUV88, which goes for about $35. A true competitor to the Baofeng. But I've got another one that's kind of escaped my view until recently. This is an Alinko DJ VX50. I've never reviewed one of these before. This goes for about $90 to $100, $99.99. So just barely hitting the mark. And you can get this off of HRO's website and Gigaparts. Very similar functionality between these radios. So my curiosity is, if they're all putting out high power, which one does the best? And we're also gonna be testing the input audio on two meters, so let's take a look. All right, so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna transmit on two meters using a signal stuff signal stick antenna. Hey, by the way, treat yourself. Go get yourself a signal stuff signal stick antenna. It's one of my favorite antennas for HTs. It doesn't hurt you if you get it, uh, get banged around when it's on your bag. You can fold it up very quickly in a knot. Uh, I am an affiliate though, so just an FYI that I do get a cut of the action if you buy one of these. It helps to support the channel, but it also helps to support hamstudy.org. The owner of Signal Stuff Signal Stick also is the provider of hamstudy.org, which I know a lot of you have used. So if you're curious, take the link in the description, buy yourself a nice antenna. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna transmit on VHF, we're gonna transmit on high power, and we're gonna use the readings displayed below to show you what the signal to noise ratio is. And then at the end, we're gonna do a comparison against all of them, and the one that has the highest values for signal to noise is our winner. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, testing on the TYT 350. High power, two meter. What good is just transmit power? We also need to test how good this speaker is. And so to accommodate that, I have a, a device at home that will transmit an audio tone and we can see how it looks on the speaker. So let's do that now. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, antenna test. First radio down. Let's stick with the TYT family and go ahead and bring out the UV88. I think this is like 35 bucks. Definitely one of the cheaper radios. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing on two meters. Two meters with the UV82. Audio test time. Get it exactly where the other one was. Now what we're looking for here is a good audio quality. I'll hold it up. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu and Pretty similar. Pretty similar sounding, I would say. All right, we'll take the signal stuff signal stick here. Next, we're gonna look at the Yesu FT4X, which for me, I think is like the perfect sweet spot uh, for size. The FT4X, as I said in my review, to me is, is kind of like a Baofeng killer. A lot of you didn't agree with me because it's too expensive. It's $80 now for this guy, uh, but I still prefer it. I think it's the better radio, to be honest. That's just me. High power on two meters. 
Now let's do that audio test. How does this sound coming out of that speaker? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu antenna test. Sound pretty much the same across the board, don't you think? Last one here is going to be the Alinko. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu testing the Alinko DJ VX50, two meters high power. All right, now for the audio test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu antenna test. The Alinko sounds like it might actually have the loudest speaker out of the whole group, which is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Well, these should be some fun numbers. Let's take a look. Taking it purely on the numbers, it's pretty clear that the Alinko has the stronger signal to noise ratio on transmit. The thing that I found though, that's subjective, and unfortunately I can't really share this with you as easily as I thought I could over video, is that speaker quality. The two radios that had what seemed to be the best or better fuller sounding speaker was the FT4X and the Alinko. But that's just my ears and listening to it in the wild doing this test. And even with that said, neither of them were that far apart. So it looks like just looking at the construction of my test, the Alinko gets the nod, the UV88 comes in second, the FT4X follows that up, and then right behind it is the TH350, that tri-band radio. Now, for those that are curious why there's two entries for the Alinko and two for the FT4X, that's just the software that I'm using with the SDR. There were just two moments in time where it captured, looks like five seconds apart in both cases, a measurement of SNR. It's possible that the other ones just didn't have it or however that was working in the software, it just didn't have a second item. But believe me, if there was a second item there, I would include it. I don't think that either adds or really takes away from the final result, but it's an FYI. I gotta tell you, if you're looking for a Japanese radio and you're looking for somewhat of Japanese quality, uh, I would recommend one of the, either the Yesu or the Alinko. I happen to like the Alinko, just looking at them. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the Yesu but I feel like that's okay. My curiosity is, and I know some of you are already thinking this uh, in the chat or in the comments. So a lot of the, the radios now that are cheap, very cheap, are like Baofeng type radios, believe it or not. A lot of them are made in China or most of the parts are made in China. And even if it's a Japanese radio, Yesu has been working with China in some cases. And I'm actually looking for a made in Japan or a made somewhere. So if I figure out where this is actually manufactured, the battery says made in China, but I'm not surprised by that. China's kind of leading the world in, in battery uh, manufacture right now. But what about on, ah, so it does say made in Japan there. So maybe that's a, a good sign that this is actually manufactured in Japan or at least to some degree manufactured in Japan. Don't know, but um, yeah, I don't know. Something about this guy, the, the trigger on the side, the battery, the hinged door for the headphone jack and the mic jack. Uh, this is a, a, a good kind of throw it around radio. I know that, uh, what was it, W6RIP, W6RIP Kevin, big fan, search and rescue guy here in Southern California. A good kind of just throw it on your body and get to doing what you're, whatever it is you wanna do. A good radio in that regards. At $80, it's not too expensive. I think the um, you can make a, a solid case for the UV88 being 35, why not? And if you're hell-bent on getting that, uh, that 1.25 meter or the 220 megahertz band, then the TH300, TH350 from T TYT is the way to go. Now, uh, I will post links to buy2wayradios.com. I am an affiliate for buy2wayradio.com and they did send me this one for free. I like to mention that whenever I have something given to me, sent to me to review, just so you know, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. With that said, every other one of these radios I have purchased myself and hopefully the way I do my testing means I can be objective and have my own thoughts, but at the end of the day, the scores are what actually tell you what is the better radio. So I'm hoping we get some actual verdicts and actual numbers we can work with and you found this interesting. If you did, please consider subscribing, give me the thumbs up, and post your comments below how, we think, how you think we did on this video today. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.